As you probably heard, last night was the State of the Union Address, which gathers the largest audience of any political event each year. The regularly scheduled programming on all of the major broadcast networks is interrupted for the speech, and it's like the Super Bowl in politics. And last night's with old Joe was a doozy, and so was the Republican response. So you're definitely going to want to stay tuned for my analysis of that, because as you know, I don't sugarcoat anything, not even what the Republicans do. It began with Joe literally going off script and admitting the obvious. Good evening. If I were smart, I'd go home now. Well, Joe, we know, unfortunately, you're not. And so the State of the Union address, which obviously is supposed to talk about how well things are going in America, began with old Joe talking about how we should give more of our tax dollars to foreign countries. Ukraine can stop Putin. Ukraine can stop Putin if we stand with Ukraine and provide the weapons. The money, the weapons, which we don't have because we're bankrupt. But the highlight of the evening occurred before old Joe even began his speech, when he was wandering around the chamber trying to find his way to the podium, when he was confronted by the great Marjorie Taylor Greene. And the look on his face says it all. Look over here. She's wearing a MAGA hat and a shirt that says, say her name talking about Lakin Riley, the Georgia college student who was killed by the criminal illegal invader. He tried to slip away and escape, but Marjorie Taylor Greene persisted, and then this happened, which set the stage for a truly remarkable event later. I know how to say the name. Lakin Riley. <laughs> say your name, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. So then, maybe 45 minutes or so into his speech, he finally started to address the crisis at the southern border. But, of course, to the Democrats, the real crisis is that they just can't automatically grant the two million criminal invaders who break into our country every year automatic American citizenship and get them on the Democrat voter rolls and the government welfare dole in order to implement the Cloward Piven strategy. And so Marjorie Taylor Greene started heckling him again about him not mentioning Lake and Riley's name. And then miraculously, this happened. I'd be a winner, not really. I... Lincoln, Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley, he says. Well, you get an A for effort. And that's the pin that she handed to him. He didn't know what to do with it, so he set it on the podium. And this is completely off script. And it's actually quite incredible. Marjorie Taylor Greene shamed the President of the United States into finally saying her name and saying this. An innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of thousands of people being killed by legals? To her parents, I say, my heart goes out to you, having lost children myself. I understand. But while it is amazing that he was basically bullied into saying her name and raising awareness about this issue, at the same time, he also disrespected her and the thousands of other Americans who have been killed by illegal aliens over the years by trying to downplay the threat that they pose. He wasn't quite articulate with what it was that he was trying to say because he was going off script. But when he started to say something about, but how many of the thousands of Americans killed are killed by illegal aliens? He wasn't pointing out the fact that over the years, thousands have been killed. It's over a hundred. It's usually hundreds every single year. They always just get a 15 second soundbite on the local news. And very rarely do they become a national issue like this. But he was trying to downplay that threat by comparing the hundreds who are killed by illegal aliens every year to the thousands of people who are murdered in general by fellow Americans each year, which is despicable. But the Democrats are very upset that he went off script and mentioned Lake and Riley's name and used another word that they want to throw us all in jail for using. Now, you should have said undocumented, but I, that's not a big thing, okay? 
What, what's the big thing yeah, about no, 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 I was I, I actually wasn't even going to ask about that. I was just going to ask more about the moment. But you do think that he should have said undocumented? That wasn't going to be my question. Well, we usually say undocumented. Uh-huh. He said Ill- but he said illegal. But he did stop himself before he said illegal alien, which is still too nice of a term. They are criminal invader illegal aliens. As usual, the evening was filled with countless stumbles, stutters, and mistakes from old Joe trying to get through the script on the teleprompter. I haven't seen a compilation of all of the dozens of them yet, but here's just a small sample of him trying his best. I'm going to get in trouble for saying that, but if you want to get an Air Force woman and fly to Toronto, Berlin, Moscow, I mean, excuse me, and it, well, even Moscow, probably. And just like every Hollywood award show, you can't get through a Democrat State of the Union address without pandering and giving a shout out to the rainbow people. I want to protect fundamental rights. Pass the Equality Act. And my message to transgender Americans, I have your back. Let me just translate his mumbling there. He said his message to transgender Americans is he has their back. And When touting the Equality Act, that's the Orwellian legislation which, if passed, would mandate that everybody from business owners and teachers and gym locker rooms allow anybody to simply identify as whatever or whoever they want to and allow them to go into women's spaces and then there would be nothing that anybody could do to legally stop them. Bernie Sanders was wearing a mask and no, this is not from... Previous State of the Union addresses from years ago, this is from last night, and he's not even wearing an N95 mask, which you may recall, years later, the CDC finally admitted is basically the only kind of mask which actually does offer any kind of protection against the, you know what, but there he is wearing a face diaper in 2020. Somebody made up this State of the Union bingo card, and while I didn't tally it, I'm sure that if anybody played this game, they would have definitely won within the first 15 minutes with boxes like coughs, paying their fair share, shrinkflation, January 6th, an awkward pause, LGBTQIA rights, etc., etc. And after the speech wrapped up, thankfully the camera was there to capture this moment on tape because you have to see it to believe it. Yeah, you are on fire. You are on fire. Nobody's going to talk about cognitive impairment now. Yeah. <laughs> you are on fire. Too. I kind of wish sometimes there was cognitive impairment. <laughs> Now, the audio is very difficult to hear there, but just listen again. That's Jerry Nadler, who says nobody's going to talk about cognitive impairment anymore because his speech was so amazing. Jerry the Penguin Nadler, who denies that Antifa even exists, you may recall him when he was confronted about it on the streets of D.C., he said that that was just a myth that Republicans are making up. And then Joe Biden literally responds that sometimes he wishes he was cognitively impaired. Seriously. Nobody's going to talk about cognitive impairment now. Yeah. <laughs> you were on fire. I kind of wish sometimes there was cognitive impairment. <laughs> I kind of wish sometimes I was cognitively impaired. Seriously. <laughs> he said that. After the speech, Donald Trump posted this on Truth Social. Uh, some trade rules. Why America's been the law since 1933. <laughs> also caps and won't even go into effect until 2025. Uh, and by the way, that law was written <laughs> and the benefit expires in 2025. New electric grids that are able to weather major storms and not prevent those fire, forest fires. But the circus didn't end there because after the State of the Union address, it's customary for the opposing political party to issue a response. And somebody in the Republican Party had the brilliant idea to choose Alabama Senator Katie Britt, who on the surface seems like a good choice beautiful woman. I believe she is the youngest senator or the youngest female senator, at least currently in the Senate. But wait for it. Right now, our commander in chief is not in command. The free world deserves better than a dithering and diminished leader. America deserves leaders who recognize that secure borders, stable prices, 
safe streets, and a strong defense are actually the cornerstones of a great nation. It turns out that she is the trophy wife of a retired NFL player who, like the hot chick in high school who joins the drama club and is allowed to act in the school play, not because she has any skills whatsoever, but just simply because she's hot. By the way, that was not just one small little segment of the speech. Literally the entire speech was that absurd. We see you, we hear you, and we stand with you. At least she did give the Republican response from her kitchen where she belongs. But seriously, this woman should have been reading her kids bedtime stories or getting their lunch prepared for school in the morning, not playing United States Senator and certainly not spending half of her time away from home in Washington, D.C. playing a U.S. Senator. Let's watch just a little bit more. This might actually be even more entertaining than old Joe's speech. Here, she almost broke down into tears. Meanwhile, the Chinese Communist Party is undercutting America's workers. China is buying up our farmland, spying on our military installations, and spreading propaganda through the likes of TikTok. You see, the CCP knows that if it conquers the minds of our next generation, it conquers America. Okay, I'm sorry, but we all know that a woman should not be the president, but don't make me say that they shouldn't be in the Senate either. Like I said, Joe Biden's speech was a doozy, and so was the Republican response. And so this weekend, get free shipping off of any of my shirts from MarkDice.com by using the promo code doozy at the checkout. So order my new, sorry, no vacancy, deport the mall shirt, the classic wanted for president, Donald Trump mugshot shirt, or any of my awesome designs. All available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Enter the promo code DOOZY at the checkout to get free shipping this weekend in the U.S. And check them out.